Welcome to this webinar on uh, the collaboration and uh, competition project uh, uh, coding example. So today, uh, first of all, I'm going to uh, briefly, very quickly go over the uh, process or like a flowchart of the algorithm uh, that you may use uh, for solving the project. And then we will see some uh, codes. So I've already done a webinar on uh, this topic, uh, multi-agent DDPG overview. So, and that was, uh, that went in more detail about the, how, how you will train it, how will the uh, algorithm work. So today I'm going to briefly go over the same process and but i will also show you some code some code that the sample code uh, that you may use uh, to organize your uh, code um, and to train your agent so first of all let's see how how uh, this algorithm works and we have seen this already so before everything this is your uh, ddpg agent and uh, we have seen this that uh, so it, it has uh, two actor critic uh, couples uh, like two pairs of actor critic networks um, we used act actor critic very very first time when uh, and we didn't know back then that it is actor critic but we used uh, like a two network model one of that was uh, selecting actions and the other network was uh, uh, like a baseline was checking how good the network is doing the actor network is doing so that was in dqn the very first time we used two networks uh, to train our model that was for DQN. And then we use the same thing for the navigation project. Uh, after that, we used, uh, but, but the, for the DQN network had same, uh, same architecture. Both, both networks had same architecture and they were doing uh, the same thing, right? They were predicting the action values, actually, not the action. But the first time when we actually used an actor critic was in the policy based methods uh, lesson and also for the continuous control project. And this was this was the architecture of that algorithm. So it had two two actor networks, local and target, and two critic networks. And you you know how it works. And now in multi agent ddpg so this is a ddpg uh, model so in multi agent ddpg there will be two of those and we have discussed this in more detail in the webinar on multi agent ddpg so let's quickly take a look so so there is a parent agent i'm calling it a parent you can call it just an agent okay uh, so i'm calling it a parent agent and it has two two agents and uh, for our uh, collaboration and competition we have the tennis project and one is uh, uh, a blue and another is a red agent or a green or a red and so one of those agents is this ddpg agent and the other is this agent so our so we are learning from both agents at the same time uh, so we are not training two agents to play against two another two agents no it's going to be one agent playing against another in uh, when we inference when we infer this but we are training both agents together because it will be faster because they will share their experiences shared experiences and it will be a faster training uh, so that's why we are using both agents at the same time in a training. Uh, 
but when we test it suppose you develop this for games you will be using only one agent against the cpu or player to some human player to right again we are training this together to train them faster to so that, so that they share their experience all right so okay so let's so the training how it works so we have parent agent and the two agents and they will be taking their states and they will be training as the ddpg agent does but there is um, a modification here uh that and we'll see that okay so let's let's take a look so this is one ddpg agent and how it is the uh, using uh, the experience of other agent and training and the same thing will be done by agent two uh, using the experience of agent one and its own experience and then training its uh, actor local and critic uh, local networks okay so first of all for just agent one and again this is this will be same for even agent two so agent one so environment will give you states and so it's two by 24 so the first row is going to be for first agent second row will be the state or observation for the second agent uh, so when the environment gives you uh, a state two by 24 the first row will go to agent one uh, actor local actor local uh, and the objective of this is to generate an action given a state what action should i take so it's going to generate an action okay and now initially they are not trained they are just random they have random weights uh, so agent one will take uh, its state that it sees and give out a uh, predict an action that's going to be one by two agent two will take its states to second row and uh, predict what action it should take then we will put these actions together and uh, so it becomes a two by two matrix then it is fed to the environment and then environment will uh, respond with next states so so again these states will correspond to agent one and agent two so uh, when we when we do this uh, training we need to compute the td target right that's why we did this next states so that we compute td target and then we will train our uh, critic network to reduce the loss and you know same things so we have this action action together environment and then we get next states now what we do with the next state so you know that we are going towards computing td target right so so we take the next state the first row will go to the actor target uh, it will generate action next action so the action that this agent will take after the next state okay so it gets basic state it takes an action goes into next state so that is the, this one and after next after seeing next state what action it takes that's this next action same for agent two okay and right now we are training only first agent but i need these second agents action as well just to train the first agent okay that's that's why it's called shared experience okay so i got this i got uh, next action for agent two and then i'm going to add them to a buffer in uh, a tuple format so i'm gonna take the basic state next state uh, the actions for both next actions for both put them together in a two by two two by two uh, reward that i get uh, after uh, this environment uh, and done so whether the this state was uh, a final state or not so it's going to be a boolean one or zero okay so i'm going to keep storing it until i have enough uh, memories to start training my networks the basic things that we have seen very first time in during uh, dqn networks okay so 
OK. Once I have enough memories, uh, enough experiences in my memory so that I can start training my agent, I'm going to sample uh, the these tuples randomly. That's the whole point of using buffered memory so that you get uh, random uncorrelated memories. OK. So, so loop for agent one so that means the same thing will be done for agent two as well so currently just agent one sample uh, so suppose you have a batch size of 128 or 256 or whatever so let's say you have a batch size of 128 so you're going to sample 128 tuples and each of them having states next state and actions next action okay and so on so i sample 128 tuples and now i will take the next state from here the sampled next state of both and uh, i will take the next actions also also sampled of both and input it to just agent one's critic target okay so when it was active we just use states okay only state and only of that agent so that we get actions which makes sense but when we are computing the you know action value so when we are using critic target i want to see both states uh, both agents says states and actions um, and you you will remember this in the simple uh, the one agent single agent ddbg uh, we put the state of the same action, uh, state and action of the same agent together and inputted it. So since here we are dealing with multi-agent, we, we will uh, add even the state for the second agent and action for the second agent as well. So we, this is this is the next states and next actions. So you will get an, you are probably getting an idea of what we are doing here. We are going towards computing the TD target first, right? so we this goes in and we get some uh, action value for next uh, state for agent one and we use that to compute td target uh, reward plus gamma times uh, this so we, we get td target uh, and then we want to we compute the the action value given current states and actions so it's the same pattern and when we get the action value current action value so i call this this current because uh, before training the network so given the current state of the network current parameters what is it computing and I do this so that I can check how far it is from my TD target, and then I can update my network. So that's the later after that is going to be the updated network. All right. So, so and these are also sampled, right? So these are sampled next state actions and samples current state actions. Uh, input it to the current version of the network. Get current q state action uh, value sorry action value okay and then update by minimizing the loss between t target and this okay so i i update this all right so now i update that and then i use uh yeah, I update this, the critic local. Now I will need to update my actor local because that's the that's the objective. Uh, because that's these are the two networks that we'll be using for inference. So critic local, actor local. Okay. So before updating the actor local, I need to get, I need to know how it is doing currently, the before updating it. So. So until now, we have updated the critic local agent only. We haven't updated the target or any other agent 
yeah, the other network. The first network we update is the critic local for the agent one. Now I need to update actor local. Sorry for being redundant, but I just want to be uh, clear. So after the critic local, I need to update actor local, but I need to know first how it is doing. What is its performance currently before updating and the most recent version? So I will put the sample state here and I will get new action. So I know how good it is doing. So here I'm not using the sample action. Okay, I'm generating new action based on the sample state. So I get new action. Same for uh, the agent two. Same for uh, agent two. Uh, most recent version. Okay. Now I input this to the updated critic local network that I got, and I'll get some new action value. Now I will update my local agent in order to maximize this as much as possible. And then uh, I'll get updated actor. So this is the second network that we updated for agent one. So these are the only two networks that we update or train here in this uh, algorithm. The first is critic local, second is actor local. OK, as far as uh, the targets are concerned, critic target and actor target, we do a soft update on them from using the most recent version of uh, actor local and critic local, just like uh, in ddpg algorithm we did soft update using uh, tau parameter and uh, even in uh, dqn uh, we have done that we have implemented a soft update so we do soft up after uh, these two networks the, the local networks are updated or trained we'll do a soft update on uh, our target, sorry, target uh, networks, critic target and actor target. Okay. Okay. Now let's see how. Now this was PowerPoint uh, presentation. Okay, it's uh, easy to present uh, graphically in the PowerPoint, but how do you implement this in code? So I will give you an example of how you can organize things, you know, be as much modular as possible. Start from simple, most basic code. And then once uh, it's working, if when the syntax, there is, there is no syntax error or there are no un, uh, ex unexpected things happening, everything is going as expected then you make it more uh, uh, complicated make it special okay so first of all start with the very basics okay and now uh, i have these other um, uh, scripts with the, the code for them and i won't go over these like uh, buffer it is going to be the same unless you want to make some changes in the parameters it's up to you but it's the same same code from the DQN exercise, same. Um, and then OU noise, the same thing. Unless you want to make changes to the parameters or anything. But I'm using the basic thing. So I won't go over these. Uh, I will go over model though. Yeah. OK, so let's start with single DDPG agent. So. This is one agent, DDPG agent, one agent of that. Uh, so let's see. I can split this into. This is one, one DDPG agent. And the second agent is going to be the uh, same, same. It's going to follow the same. So I will create two instances of this and put them inside a parent class, right? So this is how you can organize. So uh, 
So let, let's look at the single agents uh, methods and uh, attributes. So the single agent has, it has to have four networks, right? Actor, uh, two actors and two critics. Uh, okay, now uh, let's look at the models because actor and uh, critic have different architecture, right? So actor local, and uh, I'll go in my model. So this is my model, I'll call the class as network. And I have uh, I have used this. So if it's an actor, then use this network. Otherwise, use the other network. That's what I've done. So you can do this this way, or you can separately write write uh, write the network for actor and critic. It's up to you. So uh, start with simple, and then you can maybe do this. So my DDPJ agent has two actors. So actor local, actor target and uh, optimizer for just the local. So I have only local, actor local dot parameters here, some uh, learning rate. Then I have uh, critic local, critic target, and the optimizer for critic local parameters only. So again, uh, it's important to remember that we are only training the actor local and critic local networks, right? And the others will be soft updated. Noise instance of noise. Um, uh, okay, ignore this hard update thing. Yeah, it should be soft update. Uh, and some tau for those. Okay, and so and this is just one agent. So four networks. I define four networks. Optimizer, noise. Uh, yeah, and the buffer will be um introduced in the the parent because it's common to both okay it's not specific to just one agent right it's uh, there will be one buffer memory which will be common to both so that will be uh introduced in the multi-agent script here okay so and so the methods for this Local act, that means how the local actor local will act. This one. And target act. So actor target. You can label it any way you want. Uh, hard update. Now I have written a method for hard update, which is directly copy pasting the whole thing as it is. But in actuality, I'm going to use the soft update method only so you can uh, ignore this this was an experiment okay reset action so yeah uh, another uh, modification you know it is not the basic thing another another modification so basically it has a target act and uh, yeah local act and target act uh, and the the critic uh, actions where the critic network will be used in the parent later on so you will see that the so same thing will be for agent 2 same same thing now let's see how i bring put them together so i call it class parent you can call it just agent you know up to you um, and i put them in a list of two agents and these are the parameters I pass for each. So these are the two instances of DDPG with parameters. Together, they are, uh, I call them um, MAD, multi-agent uh, DDPG, multi-agent DDPG agents, so MAD agents. And uh, so I batch size, buffer size here, and the other parameters. And so, yeah, so the parent is going to be taking steps, adding to memory, and then invoking each agent and make and making it learn right here. So the update method is where all the important uh, actions or important coding takes, takes place. Uh, yeah.
and so uh, uh, you can write your uh, main.py or train.py like in uh, you know you can make a py format file or you can Im implement this in uh, jupyter notebook you can invoke those models from jupyter notebook so this is the basic stuff basic basic uh, currently it's not trained then uh, your turn and and the same same format we have used since the beginning of the very first lesson uh like the state is reset and then it you you take action you take state and give it action and everything and uh, i think i have gone over this again uh in the webinar uh on the over, overview of uh, mad agents uh the whole thing I, I won't go much in detail about this because i want you to figure out and that's it and this is the basic model so this was the modular modularized not that modularized and uh, i encourage you to make it even more modular by modular i mean that i i wrote separate code for the basic small parts and then i keep, keep i write the code for this by bringing together the small codes so i just by making instances of the small things and then i made two instances of this into other one the big one right so write code for the basics and then bring them together to make others and then bring this together to make big ones here like this and then run the parent the parent or the main agent will do all the action step uh, method is gonna and we have seen this many times first it will add stuff to the memory and then it will uh, if we have you know this condition batch size and also i i put condition for uh, steps number of steps so i don't want it to train after every step just to save uh, on some uh, computation uh, so i make it train after so and so number of steps and then um, there's a loop for agents so i'm training first agent first and then uh, second agent so as i mentioned here loop loop for agent one so so let's go let's go into detail of this okay so so first agent it will sample and then it will run this update method so in update method uh, and it will take this experience and i have assign agent number ai so so during one when the one step method is invoked it's going to train both agents one by one okay and they both sample uh, uh memories individually but from the same buffer so that's important so yeah it's same thing uh, you know many times i'm saying same again and again but it, it literally is the same uh, pattern the important thing is how you organize these and the hint is to put this each agent into one big agent one main agent that was the hint yeah and i can't go in detail of this because i want you to uh, figure that out and once it is trained this is the untrained i'm gonna close this so once it is once it is trained well uh you can map it and you can plot it and it will show you something good um, and once you train it you can you have to save the models too right so there is a yeah so i have made this save model method um if you go here yeah so you know about this already and what i did is uh, when i saved model and i didn't stop i didn't break when it when it went over uh, 0.5 because 0.5 is your uh, solving score right uh, now here it shows that i i broke but uh, uh, when i ran it uh, Afterwards, this is the in the beginning. But when I modified and ran this, 
I didn't break it. I kept saving models. Uh, even if the score passed 0.5. So let me see if I have. So that I can compare low score model with a high score model. Uh, Yeah, so this is the one I actually used. So I I removed the break. Uh, I can't show you much of this, but yeah, I kept running it for some time. So it trained, trained, trained. It went over 0.5, uh, but I didn't stop training because see, you see, it went to 0.5, but it dropped. So it wasn't a stable one yet. Right, it took time to get a stable uh, model. So I. Once it went over 0.5, I kept saving those models. And you can see I even got very close to 2, even 1.9 once. And it again dropped. But in the middle section, there is a stable zone here. Right, It drops after this. So it's unstable model here, unstable weights. But in in here there is a stability you see a stability here so my uh, ideal model would be in the middle somewhere here so like 1.25 or something and i also compared i was just playing around so i also compared one model weight with with uh, another one stable one so 0.5 i passed but i i ran uh, one agent so this is how I was saying uh, pre previously that we are using both agents just to train faster. But when we in use them, it's going to be one agent against another. So what I did is used one score for one, one agent and use another higher score uh, model for another agent. And I made them play against each other. And uh, the one which had stable weight won every time. So this is not uh, a requirement but you can also do this you just have to train it you just have to once you go over 0.5 you can stop it's up to you you can stop here but uh, i'm just showing that how i kept playing with it so so yeah so i i trained and i've labeled them that way so one agent is uh, 1.9 okay so bo actually both are but you you get the idea uh 1.5 1 1.5 both are okay so both were 1.5 both are 1.218 but I've changed it, but uh, you can use one agent to have one weight, and you can use another agent, so zero one, another agent to have a different weight, and uh, you can make them play against each other this way. So this is just one point zero zero two. Now these are now when both have same weights, they will keep it. Uh, they will keep the ball in the air continuously but when they have different weights one of them is going to win right away uh yeah but since the ball wasn't in air too long because one of them had better weights uh, than the other the ball won't be in air too long and so we will get a lower score so ignore this because both have same now so this is different but you can use that you can do one one trained lower trained weight against higher score trained weight and so on and this is not required okay this is just i was just playing around okay again once you go over 0.5 you can stop over there that's all is required to pass this project but yeah i hope uh, this has explained it helped you understand
how to organize the code. No big deal. I can't go in much detail of these methods because it's a submission project. Uh, yeah. But the thing is, uh, define the basics and then put them together into making one agent and then put those two together into making this like modularity, usual uh, programming stuff. Even if you are not, uh, don't have a programming background, you can understand this pretty well. So that's it. Uh, and uh, good luck to you all with this project. And uh, yeah, I'm going to end this webinar now. And good luck to you all with this project. And thanks for watching uh, the recording version or the live version of this webinar. And uh, have a nice day. Thanks. Bye.